Hey there! In this video I'm going to show and explain to you how I drew this picture plus some background info. I made it as a special drawing for my Snow Leopard tutorial. If you want to learn more about how to draw these beautiful wild cats then you can watch that video too. The same goes for pine trees and this wolf Amaterasu. Alright then, let us start. At first I sketched out the background and environment. I know, the colors look atrocious. But during the sketch phase I care more about distinguishing the different elements with colors that have a high contrast from each other and the white background. The tree is supposed to be the main part of the picture and therefore is quite large. I wanted to give it those super exaggerated angles like some pine trees in Japanese gardens. And since the rocks are hard and the roots can dig too deeply into them, they are growing mostly on the outside. Second would be the stairs and then the mountains in the background. The general idea of the style of this picture was definitely based on traditional Japanese ink washing paintings, sumi-e. The basic pose of the snow leopard is supposed to be relaxed, just launching around on the tree. Amaterasu and this lady, Masei Anella, on the other side are walking up the stairs and looking towards the snow leopard as if they just noticed it. While I'm adding more details, I also include some whirlies as I call them. I always love drawing these. And the game Okami, which this picture is also based on, has tons of those. I don't know, I just really like that kind of style. The tail especially is really exaggerated, because that's one of the most characteristic features of snow leopards. So this snow leopard is supposed to be a so-called celestial brush goddess. In the game they are there to teach you new brush techniques, new abilities to further progress through the game. I'll talk more about my brush technique idea later. Let's focus on her design for now. These gods are all white and have red markings on them, like the wolf Amaterasu. So instead of the usual spots, I painted these red markings on her face, not all too different from Amaterasu. But I still wanted to have the normal pattern of rings and spots on her body. Making them all red would have been too much though, so I decided to make only one row red. And also some of the whirlies have been turned red. I tried to paint some large spots on the tail too, but later I scrapped that idea. Amaterasu has been drawn pretty much the same way as usual. Not all that different to my tutorial I made during the first year of my YouTube show in 2016. Gosh, it already has been more than 4 years since I started. Well, I still enjoy drawing Amaterasu just as much as I did back then. And Okami is still one of my absolute favorite games. Next up is the person I made this fan art for, Masei Anella. So why did I choose to make this for her? Well, I am a fan of her gaming content on YouTube and Twitch. Not that long ago she made a playthrough of Okami, which is also one of her absolute favorite games. So I thought that this would be very fitting. By the way, she is a really good artist too. You should definitely check out her drawings, especially if you are into video games and animes. Oh, and recently she got a bird. Her name is Mifa, based on the Zelda game Breath of the Wild. That little feathery friend is super cute, and I remembered from the streams that she likes sitting on Masei's head. <laughs> Masei's outfit in this drawing is in a traditional Japanese style. She wears a hakama and a haori. Now I'm getting to the outlining and for that I got myself a couple of really neat brushes that simulate the texture of Japanese calligraphy brushes pretty well. I'm mixing a more solid brush with some that are very rough looking. Also the way I handle those brushes is different from how I usually do the outlining. Normally I kind of paint the outlines, doing small strokes and making small adjustments. Here in this case I try to do long strokes and vary the pressure as I move the pen. The aim is to simulate the look of traditional brush strokes, which would be physically drawn in a similar way. 
Also, I kind of enjoy drawing like that. It has more of a fluid feeling to it. Well, ignoring the part where I repeat the same lines multiple times, over and over again. I say it so often, but oh dear, I love having the option to undo steps. If I would do this picture with actual brushes and ink, it would look so much worse. I totally admit that. One thing that is a bit harder for me to simulate is the drying out behavior of a traditional brush. You know, when you make a stroke and run out of ink if you go for long enough. Even when I try to adjust it later and make the strokes fade out, it's just not the same. For solid color strokes, those brushes are fine though. Maybe I will find a way to simulate that effect in the brush settings, who knows. For painting the needles of the pine tree, I pretty much just used the same techniques as I did back then for my tutorial. I could have experimented a little bit more with other kinds of brushes and styles maybe, but meh, I just felt like sticking to what I already know. The clusters were slightly painted in a way so that they follow the view angle. The lower ones show mostly the top, since we look at them from above. While for the upper ones you can see the underside much clearer. You can especially notice that when looking at the branches and how much they are blocked by the needle clusters. The order in which I color and outline varies for the different parts of the picture. The characters are getting the lines at first, and then I make a base color layer in a color that contrasts both white and black very well, turn it into white and paint the actual colors on top of it. But for the tree I just straight up apply the paint at first, and the outlines will be added later. It works with the tree because I don't have to be precise with the lines. It's more about the general form, rather than details. If I would start with the paint for the characters at first, I would still have to be precise with it in order to make it look good. And I'm simply not very familiar with that way of painting. Next up I'm painting the rocks, and for the most part I don't really know what I'm doing. Learning how to draw or paint rocks is pretty high up on my list. I definitely want to make a tutorial about that topic relatively soon. The lines for the tree were drawn very whimsical, like the paint itself. And of course I had to add some of my beloved whirlies. As the branches get thinner and thinner, so do the lines. And most of the thinnest branches have no dark lines at all. That way the small branches don't stick out too much and still retain the brown base color. Just like with the rocks, I also have barely any sort of initial plan for painting the snow on top of them. Tried out a bunch of brushes and honestly I wasn't all too happy with any of them. So in the end I used several ones. Some for applying more texture and some for opaque paint. By the way, I set the background to this kind of old paper color already so that I can distinguish it from the white snow. And yeah, Painting the snow took me a really long time too. I gotta find a more efficient way. Some snow on the wooden parts of the tree too, of course. It is actually a neat way to make the tree look more three-dimensional. You follow the perspective and the curvature of the branches, painting the snow only on the top. The small branches have barely to no snow on them. Not only because they are so narrow, but also because they are mostly covered by the needle clusters. Now one of the really fun parts, painting the texture of the tree trunk and larger branches. I added more of that whimsical look, making it wind around a lot, included some whirlies here and there, and not worrying all too much about making it look realistic. Just one thing I had to be careful about was to properly follow the curvature of the trunk and branches. I needed to do quite a lot of adjustments to the snow on the tree so that it doesn't look just glued on.
For the stairs, I utilized the perspective ruler of Clip Studio Paint so that I could draw the vertical and horizontal lines quickly and comfortably. I also made sure to make the stairs follow the rules of perspective too, making the top side progressively narrower and the overall sides of the steps smaller the further back they are. I didn't worry too much about being super accurate about it though, it doesn't have to be perfect. Working on the rest of the rocks and the snow on top of them. Everything has to be snowy because we are high up in the mountains after all. The place is supposed to represent the Himalayas, one of the snow leopards' natural habitats. In the Himalayas, they are usually found between 3 to 5.4 kilometers above sea level. Certain trees are still found even above 4 kilometers altitude. However, this picture here is supposed to be really high up, definitely over 5 kilometers, maybe over 6 even. So this pine tree is supposed to be really special. Okay, so I added a texture layer and started working on the colors of Mifa and Masay. Mostly, I just wanted to make sure that the colors go well with Mifa's pink feathers. That's why Masay wears red. I also added this crest on her sleeve. Originally, I wanted to include a logo or something like that of hers. However, I think she doesn't really have such a thing. She normally has her chibi self on her profile pictures. And she also uses a banana bunch, but as far as I understand it, it's supposed to represent her subscribers or general audience on Twitch. So instead, I designed this heart-formed crest that actually spells out her initials. M and A for Messe Anella. I really like that idea and I think it suits her well. Other than using it for the drawing here, I'm not planning on doing anything else with it. But if Messe maybe wants to adopt that idea in some kind of way, she is more than welcome to do so. Now we're getting to the shading and highlighting. I keep those relatively faint because I don't want to create too strong of a contrast for the colors. Multiply layers for the shading and glow dodge layers for the light reflections. There is not much to explain here, so let me tell you some more background info for this drawing. The game Okami plays in Japan, but my idea was that Amaterasu and Masei go on a journey to the Himalayas to find this elusive celestial brush goddess and learn a new technique from her. And the journey is definitely not a cakewalk for those two. Excuse me, for those three. Mifa is just as important, of course. Surviving in that harsh, freezing environment would be extremely difficult, obviously. But I imagine that Amaterasu is able to protect Masei and Mifa with her fire and wind powers, as long as they all stay close together, that is. But even Amaterasu has her limits. The brush technique that they are about to learn might help though. You gotta wait a little bit longer though in this video before I tell you more about that. Back to the drawing. I wanted to make sure that the snow looks extra glittery. Adding some drop shadows below the roots for more three-dimensionality and of course the snow gets some shading too. The foreground is mostly done, so let's get to the distant background. Once again, I barely had any prior experiences with painting mountains. But at least I knew a little bit from what Bob Ross has taught me, even though I am not working with oil paints here. I just painted the shadows all at a slanted angle and left the illuminated sides mostly blank. Added a lot of randomness to my brush strokes so that I give the mountains plenty of texture. And then I let them fade out at the bottoms to indicate some clouds or fog. I actually was fairly happy with how the mountains looked like already, but of course they also had to have snow on them. Took me quite a while because I wanted to make sure that I still retain some of the shadows and also add a lot of texture. Well, at least in the end I'm happy with how they turned out, even though they are just some faint background. Doing some calligraphy now. Well, not quite, it's more like slowly painting those kanjis. By using the new brushes, I tried my best to create the illusion of continuous brush strokes drawn at variable speeds. I actually attempted to practice Japanese calligraphy for a couple of years in my past. However, I never really got good at it. 
it's way harder than it may seem, I can tell you. The first kanji here stands for warmth, and the second one for god or spirit. Together they would be probably pronounced as a tatagami. Please correct me if I'm wrong. And now this shape here is supposed to be the brush technique that I was talking about. My idea is that by encircling something twice in one brush stroke, you protect it from extremely cold environments. It is like the thick and fluffy coat of a snow leopard. I know that Amaterasu already has the ability to control flames, but first of all that requires a source of fire, and secondly it acts more like a short burst of heat rather than constant comfortable warmth. So for example Amaterasu could use that new technique on Masei and Mifa, and both of them would have no problem withstanding the cold of the Himalayas anymore. I imagine it having some kind of time limit though. Amaterasu wouldn't have to be close to them so that they can keep the buff. But they shouldn't be separated for too long. Unless, of course, Masei is able to master the technique herself. I say she could absolutely do it. Well, to make the climate of the painting harsher looking, I included some brush strokes that are supposed to represent the freezing wind blowing through the mountains, curving around the rocks and branches. And then I added some whirlies and wavy curves in the background around the mountains. They could be the wind or some clouds, for the most part they are supposed to be just stylistic. Getting close to the finish. I adjusted the saturation and contrast via correction layers, repainted the brush technique example, added some gradients to the background, some extra textures and a few small details. And that's it. I really enjoyed making this picture. In general, I love that kind of style and want to make more. And it was extra enjoyable for me because I made this for somebody else, who is a super nice and wholesome person and made me smile plenty of times through her entertaining videos and streams. I really missed making drawings and paintings for others. And now I have a way to do so again, which is really exciting. I'll definitely make more drawings for lots of other people. But for now, let me thank you a lot for watching. For more information and links, like for the tutorial videos that I have been mentioning, please check out the description of this video. See you next time and have fun drawing!